Well, welcome back. We're at it again, one more time. We're going to uh, have a discussion and hopefully you'll listen, uh, take notes, ask questions. It won't be that incredibly long. I've been working on um, self-mastery. Well, let me go a little, a little more specific than that. I've actually been working on self-mastery for a long time. But I've been working on self-mastery where I can help present self-mastery and it's something where you can follow it. Because uh, i got to be honest with you, um, I have not always known myself as authentically as I know now. And if I'm totally frank with you, I've been, there were some times where I was totally screwed in my approach to, to living. Because some reason um, I thought the whole world revolved around myself. Um, and um, when I realized it did not revolve around myself, I was pretty shocked by that notion. <laughs> um, so it took me a while to learn how to process the, uh, you know, my own life. And it took a lot of mistakes and a lot of um, downfalls before I started putting it together. One day I was so overwhelmed by life in general, I sat in my house and decided to meditate and at that time, my life was pretty much uh, terrible. Um, even though I was touring, uh, you, know, from, you know, I'd go out on tours and I'd come back. Uh, I'd uh, would train, of course. But really, I didn't have my stuff together. I didn't really understand the lessons my teacher was teaching me. I'd write them all down. I got notebook after notebook of lessons from my senseis. But I didn't really uh, digest it. I certainly didn't put it into action. Because if I did, I would have figured this stuff out a lot, a lot sooner. But I didn't really think about it. To me, it was about fighting. I wanted to test myself. I, you know, I had a saying that I used to, uh, you know, regurgitate to myself. Um, you know, find out the truth where bone meets flesh. You know, I, I just wanted to fight people. In fact, um, bar bouncing gave me a lot of that, those opportunities to, um, to try out the stuff in real time. And also, to be honest with you, I would look for fights too, look for ways to fight people. Um, see an argument in the parking lot, be glad to get involved, silly things like that. Recall, uh, well, recall one particular incident at this club where this couple was having an argument and I came out and uh, he kind of pushed his girl or whatever and uh, I came running after him. He jumped into his car and I, I just went, Wah! pushed it, punched his windshield and blew out of the thing and he took off and went screeching out. I'm running to get to my car and I couldn't remember where I parked my car. <laughs> Probably a good thing. Uh, I was always looking for somebody to, to test myself on. So I didn't listen a lot of times to the life lessons that were involved in the martial arts, uh, I didn't really apply them to myself. Actually, to be honest with you, at some point I thought I was just pretty much screwed and I was going to you know, be miserable, you know, my whole life. So one day I was decided to meditate, not sure, sure why I decided to do it, I just decided to meditate. And as I was meditating, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I wasn't looking for it. I certainly wasn't happy in my life or anything like that. I wasn't trying to be super spiritual. I just needed a little break from the chaos, I suppose. Sitting down and, and then almost like a wave of peace came over me. Uh, almost like um, I just all of a sudden understood. I can't explain it other than that, other than like... Uh, so, uh, once I described it as like a, a finger of the universe or God touching me on my forehead or something. And believe me, I wasn't searching for anything like that, but 
from that moment on, my life changed. And I realized the interconnectedness of all things. I just realized things. And from that moment on, I started on the path of self-mastery. I started hearing what my teachers were saying. And I'm um, really putting it into the core. So I've been on this path for a long time and I uh, decided what I'm going to do is develop something called Self Mastery Course. I'm gonna put it in a 12 month program. So people can actually follow the course exactly the way I did for the most part and really explore themselves, learn themselves authentically and um, really make life awesome for themselves. Because when you actually start to try self-mastery, what ends up happening is you start to master life itself. Life starts getting better for you. So I'm developing a 52 week course and I've given a lot of thought to the, the cornerstone of what self-mastery really is. Like if there's one thing that I could point at and say, you must have this one thing in order to really take part in this journey called self-mastery. What do you guys think it would be? What, what would you think it is? What do you think it would be? Just one thing being the nucleus of what it is, what would it be? Diet, okay, what about you? Yeah, what would, what would be the nucleus? If I said, this is self-mastery, but you can't do self-mastery without this one thing, what would it be? The Bible? The Bible? Okay. All right, what do you think? Perspective. Perspective? What do you think? Consistency? Consistency? Do what? What would it? Be, what would be the one thing that you absolutely must have? The one thing somebody absolutely needs to have on the path of self mastery. I think someone said consistency. Consistency. Okay. What do you think? Uh, discipline. Discipline. Yeah. All of them were great answers that you gave, but really, if you're going to look at the nucleus of what it will take to reach self-mastery or be on the path to self-mastery, it would be discipline. Uh, there's a huge difference between motivated, being motivated, and being disciplined. Anybody can get motivated. Listen to a video on YouTube, listen to a lecture, go to a concert, hear a song, whatever. You can get motivated. Motivation doesn't last. Discipline. So all things that we're gonna do in this course to self-mastery is going to start and end with discipline. It must. Whatever you want in your life, whatever you want to do, wherever you wanna be, where, it, where whoever you want to become, it must have discipline. Actually, it's probably the greatest thing that I, I or anyone, any teacher can share with you. Because, you know, if you want to graduate college, it takes discipline. If you want to be a doctor, it takes discipline. If you want to be a plumber, you're going to have to be disciplined. If you want to be do HVAC, it's going to take discipline. You want to get a driver's license, it's going to take discipline. You want to do anything in your life, it must take discipline. It starts right there. That is the nucleus. Self-discipline is about leaning into resistance. Self-discipline, in a nutshell, is about leaning into resistance, but still taking action, despite how you may feel. Did you have a question? What is leaning into resistance? Self-discipline is accepting discomfort. 
accepting discomfort. In fact, beyond accepting discomfort, leaning into it going, okay, we're doing this. I don't care how bad this guy, I don't know how hard this guy punches, I'm doing it anyway. I don't care how scared I am, I'm still doing it. I don't care if I gotta get up at 5.30 in the morning, I'm there. I don't care if I don't like the way this tastes, I'm gonna eat it anyway. I don't care if I have to stay up extra late and, and, and uh, study, I'm gonna do it. I don't care if I don't wanna do it today, I'm gonna do it anyway. I don't wanna go work out, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I don't wanna to come to the dojo, I'm gonna do it anyway. I don't want to study today, I'm gonna to do it anyway. I don't wanna to work today, but I'm gonna do it anyway. This is leaning into resistance. Life is not designed by your default settings. It's not designed to be easy. It's never supposed to be easy. If it was easy, no one would be disciplined. Why would you willingly lean into discomfort? If everything was supposed to be easy, Everything's supposed to just come right to you as if it's no big deal. It would be uneventful. It would be not worth it. Actually, you see a lot of kids that, that way sometimes. Everything is super easy for them in their life. Maybe parents have given them everything they've ever wanted. Never had to work a day in their life. Always got their way. Parents never said no. And then all of a sudden, they can't function. Because life is not supposed to be that way. It's not that way. So then when they get a little bit of uh, discomfort, they throw a temper tantrum. You've seen people like that before? I don't get my way, I'm gonna throw a temper tantrum. It's not the way life is. It doesn't work that way. It, it takes discomfort. It requires that you take action despite the way you feel. I just said, despite the way you feel. You see, it's important that we take action in accordance with your thoughts not your feelings. It's important to take action from your thoughts, not your feelings. What does that mean? You may not feel like going to the gym, but your mind says you're going anyway. You may not feel like going to work, but you're going to go anyway because you have to. Remember, I often say it's okay to have feelings. It's not okay to respond with your feelings. You have to respond logically. Fighting is a good example. I may be really upset with someone. But if I fight back emotionally, I'm blinded by what's actually happening. So I must be in control of my emotions. I'm not saying that I do not feel emotions because I feel a lot. Actually, I feel very deeply about things. So deeply, I, I likened myself to a person in the ocean that keeps turning his back to the waves. And I don't know if you've ever been to a place that has big waves, but one of the main rules is don't turn your back to the waves. Because next thing you know, boom, they're going to crash on you. And boom, you're gonna, they're going to crash on you. They get you every time. So don't turn your back to the waves, right? That often is how I felt before I had my moment. That's what I would do, turn my back to the waves, boom, almost to try to ignore it, or, or maybe just come up with the swell, and boom, then it, and it, then it uh, 
crashes on top of me either way, or maybe try to swim into the wave and it still engulfs me with its rage. I learned that I couldn't be the swimmer swimming into the waves. I had to be the surfer riding the waves. But my emotions are underneath and I still get it. They still swell up. They're still there. But instead of trying to swim into them and let them engulf me, I ride the wave. I'm the surfer looking at the horizon, looking at everything. I can see everything. I can think. I can respond correctly as opposed to being sucked into the undertow, being turned around and bashed around by these uh, incredible engulfing waves of emotion. So we must learn how to be controlled by our thoughts, not these, these emotions. That alone takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of discipline to be able to do that. Yes? You said? So, once you figure out that you are the surfer, you are the rider of the wave, you are in control, then focus on yourself. Focus on yourself. You may try to blame other people, you may try to, to shift everything to someone else, uh, you may be jealous of other people, you may go, I wish the whole world was better, and I don't, but I don't. So I'm going to focus on uh, protesting at, uh, I don't know, uh, at some political event. But you know, if you wanted to change the world, the first you would need to change your country. And if you wanted to change the world before you change your country, you would need to change your state. And before you can change your, your state, you would really need to change your city. Before you can change your city, you really need to change your town. Before you can change your town, you really need to change your neighborhood. Before you can change your neighborhood, you really gotta change your household. And before you can change your household, you gotta change yourself. So focus on yourself. Be the change you wanna see in the world. That takes discipline. Change your identity. Change your mindset. Become who you want to become. You becoming who you want to become has nothing to do with changing anyone else. Be the change that you want to see. Does that make sense? Change yourself first. I remember lifting weights with Blackhawk one day and across the bend, there was some guy doing a pull down bar like this. I mean, he was just going to town, totally wrong, completely wrong. And I was like, oh man, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go say something about that guy. I'm gonna go teach him how to do it. And Blackhawk said, no, 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 don't do that. Don't, don't go over there and help him. He's like, no, nah, I'm going over anyway, I'm gonna help him. I go over and I teach them. I mean, I taught them good. <laughs> taught them the perfect technique. And he went right back to doing what he was doing. He didn't care. How could he not care about my expert advice? <laughs> he didn't. I was worried about somebody else, but really, I wasn't really. Because if I was going to, if I was going to be perfectly honest, like, I don't care if he gets big triceps or not. Like, I don't care. I don't know this guy. I've, I've never met him before. I haven't seen him, seen him since then. I really didn't care. What, what was I looking for? It was my ego. It was my ego trying to get some validation for me being an expert. And what I already know how to do, I'm going to show you. I'm so worried about them because I want to feel good about me. Well, really, it started with me when I was lifting weights myself, focus on myself. 
From that point on, I, I realized a very important lesson. I don't give anybody advice unless they ask me for advice or if they're paying me for advice. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't give you my advice because I know you don't want to hear it. But you, you guys are paying me, so I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so, focus on you. Changing you, not the guy who's doing the, not the guy who doesn't wash the dishes, not the guy who, who, uh, uh, you know, c cuts you off or going too fast or the, or the person at your work who's, who's not working as hard as you. It doesn't matter. It's not about anyone but you. Now that's an incredible dichotomy, isn't it? Considering that I already told you that you don't matter. <laughs> but if we're coming into our microcosm universe here, you are the only thing that matters. Because you can't change anything until you change yourself first. And why? Why would you want to change? Why would you want to put this discipline on yourself? Why? Why keep the discipline? I'm, I need to go to the gym today. I don't feel like it. If I don't have a strong enough why, I will never do it. One time Blackhawk put me and him on, or, or, or put us on a discipline, the strangest discipline I've ever done, and that was only to eat soup. Month long of soup. Had the vegetable soup for one month. Every meal, we had soup. You remember me telling you this before, right? I don't know why, and it didn't matter. He had a little thing called enforcing a discipline on yourself. I was like, well, what are we going to do? I don't know. Let's eat nothing but soup for a month. A whole month? You know what happens when you eat soup for a whole month? About three hours of your day is spent in the bathroom. <laughs> it goes in and right out. <laughs> I'm not even going to kid you about it. That's a lot of fiber in vegetable soup, and you're only eating vegetable soup. Breakfast, what do we have? Vegetable soup. Lunch, vegetable soup. Dinner, vegetable soup. We still can get, we need a little snack. Veggie soup. It's all we had. It was incredibly difficult, actually. But it was strengthening our discipline skills. It's like a, you know, a weightlifter in there. If I want to get strong biceps, what do I need to do? Lift. I need to practice. I need to do more reps. Every time I applied that discipline of eating soup on myself, you know what happened to my discipline? It was like doing, I mean, uh, my, my uh, discipline muscle. It's like doing a rep, man. Every time I eat that soup, doing a rep. Every time I had to run to the bathroom, doing a rep. <laughs> I was repping discipline, man. So every time, when that discipline was over, we did another discipline. We started training for a, uh, a what was known as a cyclocross race. If you haven't ever done cyclocross or learned anything about cyclocross, it's like uh, that bike I have in there, that yellow bike that's in there, uh, it's a cyclocross bike. It's basically a dirt track on obstacles like that you do on a bicycle. It's not mountain biking. It has different wheels. It has thin wheels like a road bike, but it's done on a very, a very different bike made specifically for those kind of obstacles. It's very hard. So we started training for cyclocross. Why? I don't know. I don't even like cyclocross. But it was a discipline. We're exercising our discipline muscles. If you don't have your why, you're going to do that. You'll never do it. I had my why. Uh, you may need a why just to get out of bed. That might be a discipline all by itself for you. You have to discover your why. Self-mastery, the whole thing is about why. 
and I contemplated about making that the nucleus. Why? And the reason why I couldn't make why the nucleus is because you can have all the why in the world, but if you don't have discipline, you're not gonna, you're still not gonna do it. <laughs> so really it's discipline and then why? Why is your motivation, I suppose. And like I said in the beginning, you can have all the motivation in the world without discipline, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. Be totally motivated to go into the military. I'm going to the military. But you don't have the discipline to make it happen. I had this one gentleman today tell me, I'm going to go and be in the NBA. And I said, well, what did Kobe Bryant do? He said, well, he'd get up early. He'd, he'd train. He'd do this, that, and the other. I said, what time did you get up this morning? He said, 8 a.m. I said, you don't want to be in the NBA. You're motivated to do it, but you have no discipline to do it. Because if you really wanted to do it, you'd be up early in the morning working out. And then you'd be studying the game of basketball all the time. You'd be so obsessed over basketball, that's all you would think about. It'd be your first love. That's what you would be doing. You'd be out running drills. Well, I get up and play basketball a few times. Okay. That's not even close to what Kobe Bryant did, or Michael Jordan did, or the people who are really in the NBA doing. No, not even close. If you want what they have, you've got to do what they do. That kind of discipline. Well, I want to be a Navy SEAL. You want to be a Navy SEAL? What, what time did you get up this morning? You want to be a Navy SEAL? You're going to lift, uh, all, your, all your training is lifting weights? You're not training, you're not, no, no, you're not, you're just motivated. You like the idea. You have a why, with no discipline. True. I want to go in the construction business. Really? Yeah. What are you doing today? What time did you get up? Did you work all day during your work or somebody have to yell at you? You, you want to do what? No, you don't. You have an idea. You have a why, but you don't have the discipline. Jim Carrey. Everybody knows who Jim Carrey is? Famous comedian. Love him. One of my favorites. Jim Carrey was super poor, broke as a joke. But he was determined to be a comedian. He does this incredible uh, uh, physical com comedy. It's really quite amazing what he does with his face and everything else. But anyway, he was broke as a joke. He sat up uh, on the top of a hill one day overlooking Hollywood. He's looking down over the lights and he pulls out his checkbook and he writes himself a check for $10 million. Of course, he didn't have $10 in his bank, but he folded that check up and put it in his wallet. And whenever he started lacking the discipline, he pulled that check out and take a look at it. And, and if he wasn't able to cash it yet, he kept going. Now, I don't remember what movie it was that he filmed. Uh, it could be Ace Ventura, it could be, I don't know what it was. I don't know which movie it was, but one movie he made, he cashed that check for $10 million to himself. He had the discipline. And you know what it takes to really succeed through that is to embrace the suck. You have to embrace the suck. Because there are times in the morning you go, I don't want to get up for work. Embrace the suck, man. Let's do it anyway. I don't want to go to the dojo. Embrace the suck. Do it anyway. I don't want to do this, that, and the other, what or that, whatever it is, whatever it is, still embrace the suck. Do it anyway. You have to embrace discomfort. In fact, that's what I mean when I say you must lean into resistance. No resistance, you're not going to have any uh, strength. A weightlifter comes around, what happens if there's no resistance on the barbells? No gains. Resistance is an absolute must. Correct? 
So lean into the resistance. Embrace the suck. That's exactly what a warrior would do. You have a campaign. Can you imagine the warriors of the old times? They had to march. They didn't get dropped off in airplanes and helicopters. They had to march through the muck and mire. Vietnam, they get dropped off in the spot. They'd have to truck through the wilderness, the jungles, so much that they would get um, rot or swamp foot. Their feet were always so wet they'd actually get swamp foot. Some of them had to have their legs amputated because they had to walk so much in the swamps and the waters. Crazy, right? Now that takes a lot of discipline. That takes a lot of embracing the suck. That takes a lot of fortitude. I call it forging your soul sword. Embracing the suck is exactly that. You're here on the dojo mat, you're training, you're working out, and I'm yelling and screaming, keep going, you can do it, do it harder. Don't you slow down. And what they're doing is they're forging their soul sword. I can yell and blue in the face. If you don't want to do it, you're not going to do it. But I'm motivating you. You got that momentary why, because Raven's yelling at you. And I don't want to embarrass myself in front of everybody here. I'm going to keep going. That's your why. But really, if you really didn't want to do it, you wouldn't do it. And then second of all, the next day, you wouldn't be showing up. But if we got people in here that'll work out that hard, come in sore as the devil and still listen to me yelling and screaming at them and keep it doing because it's not about me. It's about them forging their soul sword. Forging their soul sword. They are testing their discipline. They are leaning into resistance. They are embracing the suck. And that's pretty darn cool. One thing I like to do, my newest discipline that I've been uh, doing on myself for a little while now, is cold showers. I have gotten to where I'm, uh, I don't know if I would say enjoy taking the cold showers, but I, enjoy leaning into resistance because i believe me when i tell you i first i start off with a hot shower get myself all cleaned up and get everything all ready then i sit there and i'm like okay i start my breathing start my breathing start my breathing and i just real fast as it hits me i'm breathing i'm breathing i'm putting my head underneath it i'm i'm putting my whole body underneath it and believe me i get my whole body because there's certain areas of you that are that are a little, little more sucky than the rest to get into the and to get into the cold water, and I want all parts of it in there. So I'm getting all parts in there. I got one of these shower heads that come off of the the wall. I'm getting everything. I'm getting all up underneath there. You know, I want to feel the cold. I want to feel the discomfort. I put it back in. I time myself about two minutes most of the time. Uh, about two minutes. If I feel like I I want to go more, I will. But most of the time, I give myself a minimum of two minutes of ice cold water. Every day, every day. I haven't really missed a day, except for this, been a couple times I hadn't taken a shower, just because, for whatever reason, I couldn't or whatever. But for the most part, almost every single day, cold shower. Now, I went into that ice cold bath, we have an ice bath out there, I went into the ice bath, and because I've been doing the cold showers, I was able to sit right into the ice bath with my breathing and be fine. You'd like to try an ice bath? Yeah. It's kind of awesome. It's a very sucky kind of way. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my latest discipline. Ice cold showers. I've kept this kind of idea that Blackhawk got me involved in as this, you know, forging your, your, your you know, your discipline. Uh, I call it forging your soul sword. He was just like imp imposing a discipline on yourself. I got involved with this because of Blackhawk uh, teaching that to me. Beforehand, though, I, you know, I, I was still doing it, just not in the ways that where I was set the discipline and do it. One of the disciplines I, I, I enjoy doing, or well, I don't enjoy doing, but I do um, I, quite uh, frequently, and I have other people doing it, is drinking a gallon of water a day before you drink anything else. Drink a full gallon of water. It's actually quite difficult. Now, once you really kind of get in the vibe, there's always that last little bit of the gallon 
that taste terrible because you've been drinking nothing but water all day and all you've been doing all day long is running to the bathroom back and forth, back and forth. And, um, and so there's always that little bit, you're like, oh God, I really want a coffee, but I can't do it until I drink this flipping water. <laughs> and so you do it. And by the time you finish the whole gallon, you're like, I am so waterlogged. I, I can't drink anything else. <laughs> but I, it was something I do. I, 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 Perry gets on this uh, discipline as well, often, because I put him on it uh, every time he goes to the fight camp. Find a discipline. Another discipline you might like that we used to do. Earn your meal. Every meal, me and Blackhawk would do, I don't know, a workout. So if I wanted to eat breakfast, he's like, did you earn your meal yet? No, I haven't earned mine. Have you earned yours? No, nope, not yet. Want to go out and run? All right, let's go. We'd go run a mile or whatever. We'd come back and we'd eat. We'd, we'd do whatever we were going to do throughout the day. The lunchtime would come. They're like, uh, we got to earn our workout. What do you, you, what do you what, we got to earn our meal. What do you want to do? Let's, let's drop and do 100 push-ups. We'd drop and do 100 push-ups. Boom, then we could eat. Earn your meal. That's a great discipline. That's a great discipline to do. Lots of them you can get involved with. You may decide you want to target the fundamentals. What I mean by that, you might say, okay, well, I am going to commit to getting eight hours of sleep. That would be a good discipline for me because to be honest with you, I get four or five hours at the most every day. It would be a hard discipline for me to get eight or nine hours of sleep. I know some of you guys like to sleep your whole day. I hate sleeping. I hate it. I feel it's the biggest waste of time. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to mean to be offensive to any of you guys, but when I see people just sleeping for sleeping's sake, I'm like, what is wrong with that dude? It's too, many, too much to do. Um, that's just the way I feel. Um, so it would be actually a pretty hard discipline for me to, to impose sleeping on myself. Maybe I'll try it sometime. Uh, your nutrition may be a discipline. That's a particular tough one. Uh, but that's another discipline that I've imposed on myself. Actually, uh, my students before you guys had pizza. They're not on a particular, they're not on the Raven diet, whatever, they can eat whatever they want. They got pizza. And now I had the option to have pizza, but I did not. I, back in there, I cooked myself some broccoli, uh, yeah, broccoli and olive oil and, and whatnot. Uh, so I did not eat the pizza, I ate the soggy broccoli. But I hate it anyway. Discipline. I'd like to say I embraced that stuff, but it was it was pretty sucky. <laughs> I did it anyway. Breathing. You may choose breathing as your discipline. How many of you actually think about breathing? It's an autonomic uh, response in your body. Your your there's a part of your brain that controls it. You don't even think about it. It happens when you're sleeping. You're not thinking about breathing. You just breathe. But if you focus on your breathing, that could be a discipline. You know, it's interesting about breathing. It's very, it's very, very um, telling about life itself. Did you know you have the equal amount of inhalations as you, as you do exhalations? Same amount of inhalations, you're going to have exhalations. No matter how hard you try, there's no way you can have two inhalations and then one exhalation. It doesn't happen. You're going to breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. There's going to be light, there's going to be dark. There's going to be rain, there's going to be shine. There's going to be sleep, there's going to be awake. There's going to be hungry, there's going to be full. There's going to be uh, love, there's going to be hate. There's going to be girl, there's going to be guy. There's going to be, uh, this is the way things are. Just focusing on something as simple as that can give you a lot of clarity in life if you think deep enough. Maybe you want to use your discipline to create a balanced approach to life. Balance, mind, body, spirit, emotion, balance. That gets difficult all by itself. That's really leaning into resistance because everything in your body wants to take the easy way. It's not just you, don't worry, it's everybody. Balanced approach is not always, it was well, certainly not the easiest approach. Maybe you decide you're going to practice meditation. This is a particularly difficult one. This is a, another discipline I do on myself every day. 
24 minutes of meditation every day. I get up at 5.30 in the morning, not because I can't be here in time at 7 o'clock in the morning. I get up at 5.30 in the morning because I need to do my 24 minutes of meditation plus my cold shower. 24 minutes. And you may try to do guided meditation to start with. We did some of that uh, yesterday, the day before, in the dojo, guided meditation. My personal favorite is Zazen. That's where I'm focusing on my breathing. When thoughts come into my mind, I'll let them go, and I try to stay focused in the present moment, because really, the present moment's all we have. This is a great way to learn self-discipline, just meditate. Some of these things will help you with your discipline. Building the right habits. We all have habits. Human beings are creatures of habit. My habit, get up at 5.30 in the morning, 24 minutes of meditation. Shower, cold shower. Listen to some motivating stuff. Read. Stop and get a coffee. And then I come in here, and then I start preparing for the day. This is my habit, this is what I do every day. Then I teach, and then I teach, and then I teach again, and teach, teach, teach throughout the whole night until 9.30, get home about 10, 10 15 at night, where I, I try to decompress, but I don't really, because I'm here learning and reading. This is what I do every day, every single day. This is my habit. This is what I do, this is my discipline. Focusing on the proper habits. Maybe it's goals, setting a goal and focusing on that. Getting clarity and defining your core. That can take a lot of discipline. Getting clarity and defining the core values that you have, very hard. Um, find out what matters the most to you. This takes a lot of discipline, just to search yourself honestly. To honestly keep yourself uh, uh, real to be real, and not just with everybody else, but real with yourself. Finding goals that have proven, proven techniques. Tracking your progress might be a great discipline. Maybe creating an accountability system, asking people to hold you accountable for not follow through with your discipline. Ultimately, imposing a discipline on yourself is the nucleus of self-mastery. When you can do something that is beyond your comfort zone, this, my friends, is how you grow. This is the start of self-mastery. And I will tell you, you will never truly master yourself. It is an unattainable goal. You can never attain it. We call it the state of coup. You can never attain the state of coup. But we always try. When we don't try, we work at it. We use our discipline to work at it. So who knows, maybe one day somebody will break, to, break into it. It's really is kind of like trying to lasso the moon. Or maybe it's trying to lasso Mars. Now that I think about it, it is kind of like trying to lasso Mars. Maybe you try to lasso God himself. But at least I'm shooting the lasso up there. Maybe I'll catch a bird. Maybe I'll catch the moon. Or maybe I'll catch a star. But I'm going to throw it up there anyway. And I'm going to keep trying over and over and over and over and over again. It's worth it. Like I told you in the beginning, I was a miserable person who liked to beat up people. How do you think I learned this stuff? Not just from my teacher, man. I, I needed to test myself. Like these guys want to go test themselves in tournaments and all that kind of thing. They didn't really have that kind of stuff when I was coming up. I mean, karate tournaments, like point karate tournaments, you know. And some kickboxing, which, you know, I, I, I did that with some of my teachers, but I wanted more danger. I wanted the real deal. Bone meets flesh. Put myself through the test where bone meets flesh. What kind of person wants to hurt people? An unhappy person. When I found this path, 
I became happy. I've been happy ever since then. So I'm telling you, the first step, the very first lesson, the nucleus of self-mastery.